Hey everyone, Hal here. I want to show you something today. Uh, one of my students asked me, uh, how do you humidify your guitars? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> so I had mentioned that in one of my videos and, and so I'm going to show you today what I'm doing, what I'm preparing for, um, what I have done in the past. We'll talk a little bit about that. But first of all, let me give you the reason why I want to humidify my guitars. This is part of my music room, and I want to show you something today that is concerning. And that's the fact that the humidity in this room is 25%. Now that's not very good for the piano, and it's not very good for the guitars, so let's show you exactly what I do to help the guitars out. This is my Ibanez classical guitar. It's a 2862. That's the model number, 2862. It was made in 1976, I think. Whoa, it needs to be tuned. It's got new strings on it as of about three weeks ago, and yeah. I cannot tell you how much torture it is for me to pick up a guitar and not have it be in tune, so I have to, I have to tune it. Okay, let's look at this really closely, okay? You can see right there, there's a crack in the top. And when I was working at Chesbro Music Company in Idaho Falls, which was actually like the headquarters for Ibanez guitars. They had this particular guitar in a closet, and they had a few others too, and they said one day to the people that work there, if anybody wants to buy some guitars cheap, we've got a whole closet full of them out upstairs, they're going to sell them right now. And so I went upstairs, and I found this guitar, and at the time it was retailing for $800 in 1976. Now, Let's see, this was about 1982, I think it was, when this guitar was in the closet. And the reason it was put in the closet is because of this crack. Right there. Chesbro Music Company was wholesaling Ibanez guitars at the time, and they couldn't send this out to a dealer. I mean, you cannot send a guitar like this out that's cracked. You just can't do it. So... Um, I was able to pick up this guitar for a song. Now, for those of you who are not native to English, that means very cheap. I picked it up for $85, the guitar plus a hard shell case. <laughs> now, a hard shell case was about $85 at the time, I think. So really, this was extremely cheap. I've had this guitar since 1982, and I love it. I took this guitar over to a uh, luthier, and he fixed it for me. He was actually uh, my sister-in-law's father. And he fixed it for me. In fact, I just saw him, when was it? This last summer, just a few months ago, like four or five months ago. And he said to me, hey, do you still have that guitar? And I said, I do. And he said, that's fantastic. That's great. I think he would have been disappointed if he would have found out that I got rid of it or that I sold it or something. Luckily, I never have. I love this guitar. It's fantastic. You can see it in my videos. Um, I use it all the time. But also, what happens is that... Um, now, it developed another crack right in here. And you might be wondering, well, why does the guitar crack? Well, when you store a guitar in humidity that's lower than 45%, this kind of a guitar, because it's an all-solid wood guitar, the top, which is um, spruce. This has rosewood back and sides, and they're solid wood. And it also has an ebony fingerboard, which is solid wood. When you have a guitar that's that uh, quality, you have to humidify it. And if you don't, you're going to have a problem. And the problem that you're going to have if you don't humidify your guitar is it's going to crack. Now, Having said that, also, I know people that have had guitars in low humidity environments for a long time, and they've never had any problems with them, or they say they've never had any problems with them. Well, every guitar is different. It depends on where the wood comes from, 
how it was cured, um, where it was made, and that kind of thing. So I don't know what to tell you. But to be on the safe side, if you don't want your guitar to crack, keep it in a humid environment. Guitars that are not solid wood, that are um, laminated, sometimes they have problems because the braces are solid. Or, um, you know, just some parts of the guitar. I mean, it's just some parts are solid wood. Even if the sides and back and the top are actually uh, laminated wood. So um, it's a good idea to keep your guitar humidified. Now, what I usually do is I humidify my guitars in the case. I usually keep them in the case almost all the time, unless the room is humidified. And so here in Idaho, where I'm living now, 25%. That's too low for a guitar. It's too low for my piano. It really is. I need to raise the humidity in that room. So what I've decided to do is take a room that I built three and a half years ago for another purpose, actually. The inside is four and a half feet by six feet. And it's just perfect because I'm going to hang my guitars inside and I'm going to humidify that very small room to about 45% humidity and keep it there all the time. That will solve my problem. Here she is. Here's Rosie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my uh, guitar closet right here. It's very small. It's actually a vocal booth also when I'm not using it as a um, guitar humidifying room. I can use it as a vocal booth because I've got sound dampening right here. This room is only, uh, I think it's six feet by four and a half feet this way. So it's very small. But it's very effective because when I shut the door, everything is sealed and the humidity stays the same pretty much all the time. Let's talk just for a second about what I'm using to humidify this room. What I've got here is a Kenmore humidifier. It's an automatic humidifier. It has a meter on it. It tells me what the humidity is. I can set the humidity up or down. I can say I want it to be higher, so I can do that here. I can adjust the fan speed and all of that kind of stuff. It's actually a great humidifier. It's automatic. I don't have to worry about it. But I've noticed that this hardly, in this room, it hardly even uh, runs at all. I've got a meter on it and it hasn't run like in the last two weeks. It's hardly run. So I was wondering, maybe I should just take it out and put a pan of water in here. Here's a pan. I could just put some water in the bottom. It doesn't even have to be very much, just a little bit to cover the bottom. And this would be just like when you get a humidifier at the guitar store, the kind that you put inside your case or something. It's just got a sponge and holds the water. I'll just put a little water in here and see what happens. I've got a hygrometer on the wall so I can check and see what the humidity is from time to time. And we'll just keep an eye on it. So I'm going to take this out and run just a pan of water with a very little water in the bottom. Let's pull a guitar out of here and let's talk about this guitar. This is a Fender guitar. It is a DG3. That's the model number. And uh, I'm humidifying this because it's uh, had some problems with uh, the top caving in a little bit. So it definitely needs some humidifying. But I wanted to let you know that if you live in a climate that is below 45% humidity, then you need to be really careful that um, you have your guitar humidified. Even electric guitars. My son was asking me this morning, Dad, do we have to humidify the electric guitar? Even though this is a solid body guitar, the neck can shrink this direction. And then if you have a guitar that the frets are sticking out of the neck, you go like this and you can feel those frets popping out or they even are sharp, then what you need to do is you need to humidify the guitar so that that neck swells back out to where it should be. So yes, even electric guitars that are solid body like this need to be humidified. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for being here. We'll talk to you later. Sorry about the heater coming on and, and the noise and things like that, but we're outside and we're pretty close to it. So anyway, we'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.